The Russian NK-93 fifth-generation prop fan engine is surrounded by online myths. Many internet articles about Kuznetsov engines agree that the NK-93 prop fan engine was never completely acknowledged. Some feel that all technology linked to this engine has been lost, while others believe it may be given another shot. Some even say that it can replace PD-14 in MC-21. Is it really true? Let us find out. Without a doubt, the NK-93 ultra-high bypass prop fan engine is one-of-a-kind engine. However, many people are disappointed that it was never mass-produced. The NK-93 most certainly used less fuel than other turbofan engines with comparable thrust. One should note that conventional turboprop engines with same thrust are more efficient than turbofan engines. Whether the NK-93 prop fan engine was quiet enough is yet to be determined. Clearly, if the development of the engine had not been stopped, Russia might have resolved not just the noise, but also other problems, especially considering the increasing integration of digital control systems into Russian aviation engines. In the 1970s, Western engine manufacturers started designing prop fan engines almost simultaneously with Soviet engineers. Developing the prop fan engine 578DX jointly, two American companies, Pratt & Whitney and Allison, were the Western forerunners in this industry. The GE-36 was developed as a joint effort between the American company General Electric and the French company Snecma. Western engineers used a two-row composite fan configuration with blades spinning in opposite directions to reach great speeds with prop fan engines. Comparing composite blades to conventional turboprop engines, the count of them was much higher. Moreover, the prop fans worked at a set maximum rotating speed. This helped to prevent the choking effect noise problems, and wave drag. While the Soviet NK-93 prop fan engine underwent its first flight in 2006, Western engines were actively tested in the middle of the 1980s. American engineers achieved a cruise speed of about 830 km per hour during testing. This was the approved speed for long-range passenger airliners. Western prop fan engine testing was finished in 1988 and produced both fantastic and disappointing results. For instance, prop fan engines proved to run the same performance as standard turboprop engines while using three times less fuel. Because of their slower rotational speed, prop fan engines, on the other hand, delivered less thrust at the same diameter than jet engines. The fan size and spinning speed had to be raised to improve power, which would cause additional vibration and a reduced engine lifetime. Rising noise and vibrations led Western companies to stop their expensive prop fan engine research projects since they prevented them from getting civil aircraft certification. Economically, Western aircraft manufacturers found these engines unattractive, and they never mass-produced. Based on the gas generator from the D-36 turbofan engine, development started at the Zaporizhzhia Progress plant on the Soviet prop fan engine D-27 at about the same time. Simultaneously, work started at the Kaibyshev Scientific Production Association TRUD on the NK-92 prop fan engine, which subsequently became the prototype for the NK-93. The powertrain was initially designed to be the heart of the potential big military transport aircraft, IL-106, which was in development to replace the AN-22 and IL-76. High noise levels were noted by Soviet engineers during the NK-92 bench testing, identical issues to their Western counterparts. The designers first ignored the noise problem at the time, as military transport aircraft were not required to follow noise rules or obtain international certifications. But once the long-range wide-body passenger aircraft IL-96MK was built using the NK-92 engine in 1986, they once more had to deal with the noise problem. Hence, work started to improve the current NK-92 engine into the NK-93 generation. The first prototype of the IL-106 with four prop fan engines was scheduled to enter manufacturing in 1995, hence the engine was expected to pass state testing in the same year. Aircraft flight tests were slated for 1997. After the fall of the Soviet Union, funding was cut in 1992, Hence, all development on advanced projects was stopped temporarily. Using their own resources and donations from the general public, worried about the fate of the NK-93 engine, the Kuznetsov Samara Research and Technical Complex tried to finish the project several times, 
even without governmental funding. The principal NK-93 designer at the Kuznetsov complex, Anatoly Lotman, once said that nobody had questioned whether the engine would pass tests. Eight engines were produced by 1992, and part of a ninth was already under construction. Although the assembled prototypes had previously been bench-tested, it was found during flying testing in 2007 that the blades let the NK-93 engine, originally rated for 18 tons of thrust, generate somewhat more than 20 tons. When asked how the real thrust might have exceeded the intended capacity by more than 10%, Anatoly Lotman answered, we don't know. Perhaps, one would have to ask Kuznetsov personally. It was also discovered that the engine generated far more noise than all of its Western counterparts. In some operational settings, the noise issue remained unresolved entirely. This seems to be the main obstacle and cause of conflict over the necessity of more research and financing of the NK-93 for civil aviation. Unquestionably, the NK-93 engines were a fantastic, reasonably priced solution for military transport aircraft, as well as for the development of Akronoplanes, which the Soviet Union dominated worldwide. The Russian Ministry of Industry and Trade and the government saw purchasing foreign passenger airliners as a more immediate and promising job than competing in the global aviation market. The United Aircraft Corporation said there was no financial justification for starting building on the NK-93 engine, which would only be used to upgrade the current fleet of aircraft, including the IL-76 and AN-124. Some resources online compare the NK-93 to the PD-14 engine and even recommend using it in the MC-21 aircraft. However, it is important to understand that it operates on a fundamentally different principle and serves a distinct purpose. To say that the NK-93 could have become the heart of the MC-21 isn't entirely logical. Such judgments are unlikely to be supported by any credible evidence. Furthermore, the NK-93 is a large engine that would simply not fit under the wing of the MC-21. PD-14 and the prop fan cannot be interchanged, but NK-93's equivalent in the PD family is the PD-35. Rostec decided to concentrate on the delayed but more classic and proven turbofan design future indigenous high-power engine, the PD-35. Another point is that the prop fan engine technology is not totally lost. A modified variant of the NK-93 engine is still widely used in the gas industry today. One can only hope that work on the NK-93 engine will resume as the Russian aviation industry expands and perhaps one day we will see it flying Russian aircraft or new Russian Akranoplanes. Research is underway on prop fan in the West. Now, do you think electric and hybrid engines make the NK-93 engine irrelevant? Let us know in the comments. Please like, share, and subscribe for more such awesome content. Also, please take our memberships to support us.